Welcome back. This is going to be our sixth chapter review. This is going to be in the Practice of Statistics 6th edition. This will be bit.ly link, bit.ly AP stat MT review. It's uh, right on there on the screen if you need a link to the handout. And this is unit four of probability and random variables. So I'm a little flustered right now. Uh, so we're going to be going over just some of the random variables, probability distributions. I'm going to show you some of the formulas that are on the formula sheet. Uh, here is a lot of information you can take in. It went a little too far. Um, you want to be able to do an expected value. So you, you're going to see uh, mu x, e x, and this formula here that is on your formula sheet. This is going to be the standard deviation of a, prob a probability distribution that's also on your formula sheet. So let me pause and show you what that formula sheet looks like. All right, here's the most, the, the this is going to be on the front side of the formula sheet, the most important part. And it's dealing with discrete random variables. And that's the terminology. So what that just means is the mean of x, the mean of a probability distribution, is also called e of x, which is the expected value. And we get that by just multiplying each individual probability by its um, individual number and adding them all together. The standard deviation is a little more complicated, but you take your number that is in the probability distribution, subtract the mean, square it, and add them all, uh, times it by its probability, and add them all together and take the square root. So there's quite a little bit more involvement with the, with the mean on here. So generally speaking, we'll use our calculator to, to help assist with that. Also, you're going to be uh, dealing with uh, binomial and geometric probabilities. And here are some of the formulas. We'll get more into those later. And you also have to know when you're combining random variables, whether you add or subtract, the, the variances always add. So you always put a plus in between the variances. And the variances are the standard deviation squared. So think about that as Pythagorean theorem. Remember your, your a squared plus b squared equals c squared to kind of help think of that there. So let's get in a couple problems. The first problem, it says, uh, uh, according to a recent poll, about 42% of US adults have tattoos. This is actually a continuation of the at least one problem we did in the previous video, if you're watching that. So the multiple choice portion. Suppose you randomly sample five US adults. What is the probability that exactly two in the sample of five will have tattoos? Um, so notice that in this problem here, you have a set number of people in your sample. This is a, um, this is a set number. And that's going to be um, n equals 5. That's the number of trials. We want to know what's the probability that exactly 2 in the sample of 5 will have tattoos. So we, we want to know what is the exact number x equals 2. And they're either going to have tattoos or they're not going to have tattoos. So this is binary. And we can assume that each person, if they're randomly sampled, is independent. So this is going to be a binomial. And you actually have a formula for, for binomial. So let me show you the formula sheet, um, what that looks like. It's a little bit complicated, but you can see how it's set up over here. Again, once again, you're on the front of your formula sheet. Um, it looks like this, n um, over x. And what that means is ncx. If you're on your calculator, that's uh, n, n pc, I believe. I'll, I'll go into it and double check. What this represents is the, the probability of success to whatever the number you want it to be. So if I want exactly two, I'm gonna have 42%, that's gonna be my P, and that's gonna be 0.42 to the second power. This part is one minus P, so one minus 0.42, that's gonna be 58%. The exponent here is gonna be what the leftover is. So if this is a five, this is a two, five minus two is gonna be three. But we don't wanna discount that there's gonna be some number out here. And the way you can get that is to use a the your calculator probability menu. So let me show you. If you go into math and you go over to prob, let me roll that down here, um, and you go down to NCR, you can input um, 10 here, or excuse me, um, 5 here, and 2. And what that tells you is there are 10 unique ways that you can, you can choose two things from 5. So there's going to be a number out front, and that number is going to be 10. Now, when you set that up in the formula, uh, that's going to give you an answer 
that's consistent with one of those answer choices. And you should be able to pull that out there and recognize that it's going to be um, 10 out front, 0.42 to the second power, 0.58 to the third power. So it's going to be this one right here. Now, I should uh, let you know that there's another way to do that. So um, let me show you on the calculator how you can uh, use a binomial um, PDF. All right, so this is a it, just a set number. So this is a PDF. CDF, remember, is cumulative, that number in below. So if you were to use binomial PD, PDF, you would go into your calculator. You would hit second vars, go down to binomial PDF, 5.42, but you would change the X value to 2, and that's going to give you 0.344. Now, if you have answer choices, and you didn't know what all, what all this meant, you would have to go through and you know manually put those in. But if I put 10 parentheses 0.42, raise that to the second power, and 0.58, raise that to the third power, you should get the same thing. So let's look at part B. Suppose you randomly sample five US adults what is the probability that at least three in the sample will have tattoos? So this one's a little bit different and there's a couple approaches to this one as well, um, but I don't have multiple choice. So you don't have to worry about the formula, um, but you wanna know if you have five randomly sampled. So what's the probability that at least three in the sample will have tattoos? So you could do a binomial PDF with three, four, and five and add them together, which is totally fine. Um, you could also do a binomial CDF. And the way you would do a binomial CDF is CDFs always go at a certain number and below. So if I wanna know at least three, I wanna calculate two, one, and zero, and then subtract from one. So the probability of X being greater than or equal to three is equal to one minus the probability that X is less than or equal to two. So what you wanna do is you wanna do binomial CDF and you wanna have um, your trials be five, you wanna have your probability be 0.42 and you want your X value to be two. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna, it's gonna calculate two, one and zero and add those together and then the three, four, and five is gonna be one minus that. So I would pause this video. I would try it on your calculator to see if you can get that answer. All right, should you, uh, you should have this answer. So unpause the video and let's check it out. So you would do, so you do second bars. You go down up to binomial CDF, five, 0.42, and two, and you get 0.647. Now you wanna do one minus that. So I do one minus, scroll up and just uh, actually go over here and get that answer 0.3525. You could also do, you can see what I did over here. I just, I did binomial PDF with five, four and three. So if you added this plus that plus, that you will also get that 35.25%. So either way is fine with me, but you got to show work. So to show work, it's going to look like this. List your inputs. When you see my calculator screen where it says trials 5p.542 x value less than or equal to two, write that, write this statement right over here and then make sure you have an answer circle. All right, last question. Suppose you randomly select a US adult until you find one with tattoo. What's the probability that you do not successfully find someone in, with a tattoo until your seventh person is, uh, person is selected? So when you see the word until, that means, well, I don't have a set number, so it's not gonna be binomial. That means it's gonna be geometric. So what I wanna think about is, all right, I'm not gonna get someone with a tattoo the first time, second time, third time, fourth time, fifth time, sixth time, but on the seventh time, I'm gonna get it. So what that looks like is this. All 
um, you're, you're going to have no, 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 six no's, and then a yes at the end. Now, I want to remind you about this formula sheet that you have. All right, on your formula sheet, you do have a geometric distribution. It's down here. But what that means is you have the knots at the beginning and x minus 1. So what that really is is the knots being 58%, since 42% of people have tattoos, and 7 minus 1 is 6. And then the very last one, yay, you're successful. There's your 42%. That's going to give you 0 0.016. You could also do a geometric PDF and do 0.42 in the x value of 7 to get your answer as well. Um, but I find that that's a little bit more work. Uh, you can just subtract 1 from the total number, um, take your knot, raise it to that power, or then multiply it by your probability of success to get your answer. All right, on to the next question. All right, in this question here, um, we have a small ferry runs every half an hour from one side of a large river to the other. The probability distribution for the random variable y equals money collected in dollars on a randomly selected ferry trip is shown here. So we have y um, money collected. So they're either going to get $0, $5, $10, $15, 20 or 25 And here's the probability distribution. Um, you can double check that these all add to 1, but they should. What we want to do is we want to calculate EY, the expected value. And you do have that formula on your formula sheet. So the expected value is always just going to be the individual probabilities um, times the, the actual value and just add them all together. Um, so you need to show work on these ones. You, you know, with the standard deviation, you can probably get away with not showing work. But what you need to do is something like this. Um, you just do... Um, 0 times 0 0.02 plus 5 times 0 0.05 plus 10 times 0 0.08. And you just kind of show all that. If you want to skip ahead, you can just do like a dot, dot, dot um, after a few. And then find what you're equal to at 19.35. And it also says uh, use the calculator to verify. So I would definitely do that. But symbolically, it would look like this if you're following the formula on the formula sheet. Uh, mu y, the, the mean of the probability distribution y is equal to the expected value of y. And you always want to use the correct units. And since we're talking about money, it's going to be $19.35. So what that means is uh, the expected amount of money collected for a ferry trip over many, many randomly selected ferry trips is going to be about $19.35. That's the average amount. Now, when you go to your calculator to check, you're going to go to L1 and L2 and put those in there like this. Do that for me if you if you haven't done so. Next, you're going to go to stat, and you're going to go to uh, calc, and you do one var stats. But you want to make sure that you put L2 in the frequency list since you have your probabilities. And you can get that by doing second and the number two. And that'll put a, uh, the L2 right in there. If you have an older calculator, just put uh, second one comma second two, L1 comma L2. You go through and calculate it, and you're going to get uh, this data here. There's some data below, but we'll we'll stick with what's up here because that's what's important. And you'll notice here that the mean is what we just calculated, nineteen dollars and thirty five cents. Now the the second part, it says it doesn't say to show work, but it says interpret. So a lot of times with standard deviations, you don't have to show work on those because that that form is a little bit more involved. So I'm not going to show that work here, but you have to know where that comes from and what it means. So the standard deviation is the typical distance from the mean. So let's think about what I set up here. If I were to do many, many selected trips, on average, the amount of money that would vary from the mean would be about $6.43. This is what I wrote. In many, many random samples of these ferry trips, the typical amount of money collected varies by about $6.43 from the mean of $19.35. So an interpretation is required for full credit on these free responses. That would be your interpretation. All right, there's one more question on this video. Um, so write this down and let's go on to the next one. All right, last question of this video. The question is, 
a large company is putting together backpacks with school supplies, notebook and case of pencils for students in need. Suppose that the mean weight of the empty backpacks are 3.3 pounds with a standard deviation of 0.7 pound. The mean weight of the notebooks are 7.2 pounds with a standard deviation of 1.8 pounds. And the mean weight of the case of pencils is 0.3 pound with a standard deviation of 0.08 pound. Assume the weights are independent, calculate the following. We wanna know the, the mean total weight of the filled backpacks from this company. So what would be in the filled backpack and what would, what would make the weight? Um, well, we have the mean of the empty backpack. So we have the empty. And we have the mean weight of the notebooks. So the notebooks, what else do we have? And the mean weight of the case of pencils, that's 0 0.03 pound. So we have three things that represent your, that, that add to the weights. And since it's means, uh, you don't have to do anything on means, but um, add those together. So with means, are we just going to add the means together and get that total mean of the distribution? So add those three numbers together. Symbolically, it, look, it would look like this. Mu total equals mu empty plus mu notebook plus mu pencils. And, and just literally add those three numbers together. And you have the mean of that probability distribution for the backpacks, okay? So about 10.8 pounds. Standard deviation is of course not just simply adding. We have to get the variances first. So with those, you're gonna get those standard deviations. Um, and in this case here, we have three standard deviations as well. We have 0.07, we have 1.8, and 0 0.08. So we don't just add those, we have to square them and then add them together. So it's kind of like that Pythagorean theorem, except there's you know three things to square and add instead of two. So the squared variance of the total distribution is the squared variances of the empty backpack, the squared variance of the, the square standard deviation of the notebook, square standard deviation of the pencils, and you add those together. And what do you get? Well, you always add the variances which are the squared standard deviations. You throw those numbers in there, use your calculator and just put it all you know, together. And you're gonna get that number here being about 3.7364. That represents the combined variance of the overall distribution. So to get the standard deviation, which is what this question is asking, you're gonna take the square root because remember if you have a square, you got to square root that number to get the standard deviation. So throw that into your calculator and you will get about 1.933 pounds. And again, we want to take the square root of those to get that answer. And that concludes this video on probability uh, or random variables and probability distributions. So uh, the last video is going to be dealing with um, sampling distribution. So stay tuned for that and hopefully you'll be prepared for your midterms to do very well on it. Thanks for watching.